Hi, I'm Janet Young. I'm a professor of teacher education. I'm also the associate chair of the Department of Teacher Education. Collaborative learning is based on a different notion of learning than many people hold. We talk in education of the transmission model. I know it. My job is to give it to you. That's one view of learning. But what I've come to see and what I've come to believe much more clearly than that is that we construct knowledge based on our experience. I can't give knowledge to you. Your job is to construct your own knowledge. My job as a teacher then is to facilitate the construction of that knowledge. In collaborative learning, we have lots of ways of co-constructing knowledge. One of the theoretical underpinnings of collaborative learning is that someone who's learning at, alongside or who has just recently come to understand something is the very per best person to scaffold your understanding of that same thing. Rather than someone who passed that way many, many years ago, the sage on the stage, it's the person who's just barely grappled with an idea who can best scaffold your uh, construction of that same knowledge. In my course, it's often the application of knowledge that I'm asking them to learn that is, is benefited by collaborative learning. They do feel like they're exploring, that they're having an opportunity to use in a very practical way the knowledge that we're trying to, um, trying to gain. It makes it less abstract and more hands-on when they can actually work together to apply the knowledge. There are a number of ways from small to great that a professor can encourage collaborative learning in a classroom. In my own classroom, I use very small, simple means to encourage students to help one another to co-construct knowledge. There are other times and occasions where I set up more complex sorts of things. But really, the most basic aspect of collaborative learning is asking students to interact with one another as learning is occurring. One of the things I like to do to set a collaborative tone is to ask students to come prepared, having read the assignments, of course, and then I will devote about two minutes to a quick write where the students are given a prompt or given a a challenge to write down what it is they come with. Then it doesn't take very much longer to have them turn to um, their neighbors and share what they've written. What that does within a group is to allow students to build on one another's knowledge to bring up new points that might not have otherwise come up. Sometimes after that I will um, have each of the groups that have been working together share what they've talked about with the whole class. So in a very short amount of time, I've asked students to think individually about their interactions with the authors of the, of the pieces that they've read prior to class with a small group. And then they've also had a chance to interact on a whole group. And that sets the tone for learning in my classroom. Well, sometimes I'll give a reading assignment that will be common among all the students. And then I'll provide usually four for additional readings, and I will have my students number off, and they'll each read one of those extra pieces. When they come to class, they gather together with the people who have read the same piece that they do prior to going to their groups where they share. That gives them the opportunity to um, make sure that their ideas match what other, with others. Then I put them in groups where one person from each of those small readings comes together and teaches the others. So I give them an opportunity to prepare outside of class. But what I find is that, that the piece that the students have responsibility to teach to their peers is very often the piece that they learn the best and they know the most about. It's really based on the learn then teach model that we have heard so many times. I haven't always been a teacher who uses collaborative learning a lot. I'm like many others who find themselves as professors. It's very easy to stand up, to lecture, to come with my bag of knowledge that I know my students need, and then just deliver it, to view my job as one of transmission. What I've learned over time 
is that that kind of learning sometimes has very little transfer for students. I've come to believe that students who have the opportunity to interact with one another, to talk about what really matters to them, are much more likely to construct a rich version, a, a rich understanding of the topic at hand. From time to time, um, I will find myself kind of pinched. A lot of content that I haven't been able to have the students talk about, and I'm often tempted and often do find myself hurrying to just tell them everything else that they need to know. It's clear to me when I read papers later on, when I talk with students, that's not the most effective way to have them understand what it is that I hope that they will understand. There are many students who really naturally sit quietly by and listen. And if I choose to manage my class in a way that is transmission model, where I tell the students what they ought to know rather than allowing students the opportunity to, to get, grow together and construct knowledge, they will sit very quietly by. So when I construct activities in the class that require students to talk to one another, to provide an opportunity for them to be in small groups where many of those same students feel much safer, feel much more inclined to share their ideas, we're able to um, elevate the level of the, the discussion and everyone ends up participating rather than sitting back and quietly listening as others participate in the discussion.